Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Good afternoon and very special welcome on this auspicious occasion. The Feast of Pentecost, the first public performance of the new Mass composition by Joe O'Byrne, Mass in the Time of Trial. Very honoured have this at the 12th Mass today. The Feast of Pentecost, as you say, began with a very somber mood, reflecting the somberness and the difficulties and the struggle of the COVID period. We begin <clears throat> the Mass this morning is offered for the month's mind for Charlie Lapthorn, welcome Charlie's family, anniversary for John Bradley and his brother Ray. I Welcome John's family. Anniversary for Father Paddy Cooney and Sadie and Jack Short. We begin. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. I invite you to be seated for the Kyrie and the Gloria.
Gloria in excelsis Deo. Gloria in excelsis Deo. Gloria in excelsis Deo. Gloria in excelsis Deo. church and every people and nation. Pour out, we pray, the gifts of the Holy Spirit across the face of the earth. And with the divine grace that was at work when the gospel was first proclaimed, fill now once more the hearts of believers. We make our prayer to Christ our Lord. Amen. We seize it now and have a reading from the Acts of the Apostles that tells the story of the, the first Pentecost. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When Pentecost Day came round, the Apostles had all met in one room, when suddenly they heard what sounded like a powerful wind from heaven, the noise of which filled the entire house in which they were all sitting. And something appeared to them that seemed like tongues of fire. These separated and came to rest on the head of each of them. <clears throat> they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak foreign languages as the Spirit gave them the gift of speech. Now, there was devout men living in Jerusalem from every nation under heaven. And at this sound, they all assembled. 
each one bewildered to hear these men speaking his own language. They were amazed and astonished. Surely, they said, <clears throat> all these men speaking are Galileans. How does it happen that each of us hears them in his own native language? Parathians, Medes, Emelites, people from Mesotoma, Judea, Capitona, Putus, and Asia, Feria and Papalea, Egypt, and parts of Liz Libya, round Serene, as well as visitors from Rome, Jews and proselytes alike, Cretans and Arabs. We hear them preaching in their own language about the marvels of God. This is the word of the Lord. Second reading, a reading of the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. No one can say Jesus is Lord unless he is under the influence of the Holy Spirit. There is a variety of gifts, but always the same Spirit. There are all sorts of service to be done, but always the same Lord, working in all sorts of different ways and different people. It is the same God who is working in all of them. The particular way in which the Spirit is given to each person is for the good purpose. Just as a human body, though it may be many parts, it is a single unit because of all these parts. Though many make one body, so it is with Christ. In the one spirit we were all baptized, Jews as well as Greeks, slaves as well as citizens, and one spirit was given to us all to drink. This is the word of the Lord. Sequence. Holy Spirit, Lord of life, from the pure, clear, ancestral height, they beam, radiance give. Come thou, Father of the poor, come with treasures which endure, come through the life for all that are alive. Though of all consuls best, though the soul's delightful guest, does refreshing peace bestow. Though in it whole, art comfort sweet, pleasant cool the heat. Solace in the midst of woe. 
Please stand for the gospel acclamation. said to them, Peace be with you. And he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples were filled with joy when they saw the Lord. And he said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father sent me, so am I sending you. After saying this, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. For those whose sins you forgive, they are forgiven. For those whose sins you retain, they are retained. The Gospel of the Lord. We've been living in a kind of in-between time for the last year or so. He could admit it was a wearying and tantalizing kind of life, forever swinging between maybe despair and discouragement and hope, and also fear and anxiety, and then a little bit of light at the end of the tunnel, fear that we could be infected by the coronavirus, and hope that a vaccine would be discovered, that the lockdown would succeed in stemming the spread of the virus and eventually bring us back to some level of normality. Hope as well that it might be a different normal. But it went on for so long that many found it led to depression and loss of energy. Hope with the normal routines of life. The in-between time for grandparents. When would I see the grandchildren again? In between time for people forced to work from home. Would they ever get back to the place of work to meet with colleagues? When could we socialize and meet up with friends again? And there are those who lost their job and unable to meet mortgage repayments. And for many, this was probably being deprived of the normal rituals of, of grieving. Funeral rites stripped to the bare minimum. The in-between life was pleasant. Like the early disciples after the death of Jesus, behind firmly locked doors, spiritually kind of stretched out, as it were. We don't have all the answers in this in-between time, but have some experiences that on reflection at least to help me to escape from this abyss of the in-between times and offer hope. One of my abiding memories of my dad when I was little, about six years old or so, my dad continued to help at the family farm in Cheek Point. And at weekends, he'd bring me out to the farm and teach me about the milking of the cows and sowing the crops, etc. And... As a special treat, it allowed me to sit up beside him on the driver's seat of the tractor and allow me to steer it. It gave me a, a real sense of importance and confidence, and I was doing something that was really adult. 
that is there encouraging a presence, support of presence. Just another rather unusual story. A man driving his pickup truck skidded and he went off the road into a ditch and he was stuck there. And he went to a nearby farmhouse and asked the farmer if he had a tractor that he could borrow to pull his truck out of the ditch. He didn't have a tractor, but he had a mule, he said. The driver naturally thought it's not going to be strong enough to pull the truck out. But he said, that you don't know my mule, he said, he's called Blue. The driver doubted it, but anyway, the farmer persisted. So Blue was hitched up to the truck. Pull Blue, said the farmer. But the truck didn't move. And then the farmer shouted, Pull Elmer. But the truck moved just a little bit. And the farmer called eventually, Pull Biscuit. But the truck was pulled free out of the ditch. The truck owner was very thankful. But he was puzzled and he questioned the farmer. How come you call the mule by three different names? Simple, said the farmer. Blue is blind. And if he thought he was the only one pulling the truck, he'd still be in the ditch. So back to the gospel. On the evening of the first day of the week, the disciples were stuck in this between time of fear and despair. Jesus came with peace on his lips, the spirit to bestow. Kind of a variation on the stories I, I've, sh I've shared. The first story of the little boy beside his dad on the tractor. Well, think of the promise of Jesus that he won't lead us orphans. And he will send us the spirit to be our, our comforter, to lead us into the truth, to enable us to reach our potential as created in the image and likeness of God. The second story of the mule that pulled more than his weight when he thought he wasn't alone reminds us of Jesus who promised another abiding spirit to be with us always. We should never think we're fully alone. And today we have a further manifestation of the Spirit, its manifold presence engaging us through the gifts of music. We, I know we have a little problem with the, with the sound, but specifically through the gift of the new mass composed by, by Joe here. Music touches us at, at all levels. It can mirror and echo the deepest longings of our life in a different kind of language. It can embrace and reach us more deeply than friend or lover. Music engages us at the level of soul. In our time of this time, the in-between time, a time of confusion, and for many, a sense of forsakenness. And yet, I believe that the soul will continue to assert itself, refuses to be buried under those surface layers, at times to suffocate us, reminding us that we're children of the eternal, that our time on earth is meant to be a pilgrimage of growth and creativity. Music evokes that world where that ancient beauty of soul can resonate within us again. Mass in time of trial resonates deeply with our troubled times, speaking as a word of hope and comfort, but without glossing over the cross of sacrifice and suffering. For me, truly, the manifestation of that creative spirit of God hovering over our lives to lead us forward into new and new future. Just a final thought, it's no barrier 
doors were closed with a powerful image. No barrier is able to keep Jesus from his peace. Handing on his peace for our in-between times. So Pentecost is about gifts, promise, presence, and surprise. A comfort for us in the in-between times. And a promise of renewal, his abiding presence. Let's stand to profess our faith in the Lord, the giver of life. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, Begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things are made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. Rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and seized at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Today the gift of Easter is complete. The spirit that Jesus promised is given to us. We pray for the outpouring of the spirit on, on the world, on the church, and on ourselves. We pray for the church born on Pentecost. In the power of the spirit, may we put our faith into action and help renew the face of the earth. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. May the Spirit lead us to know God better. May the Spirit guide us as we search for the truth. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. We thank God for the many ways that the Spirit inspires people with love and generosity. May the world be a better place. Lord, hear us. We pray for the boys and girls in the parish to be confirmed this year. May God's spirit move their spirit and help their personality to flower. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. We pray that through the union of the Blessed Virgin Mary and who have accompanied the apostles to receive the Holy Spirit, men and women will receive the grace of being brought to Christ's court and to follow him as he leads, seeking in the consciousness of life. Lord, hear us. We pray for all who have died, especially this Mass. Now remember Charlie Lapthorn, who was once mine, which is John Bradley and his brother Ray, Father Paddy Cooney, and Sadie and Jack Short. Send forth your spirit, O Lord. Bring them to their inheritance as your cherished children. Lord, hear us. We praise and thank you, Lord, for the gift of the Holy Spirit, the total gift of yourself, to be with us in all times and situations, that we may be in you now and forever. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. May we cease in peace. The notice is now for today, the Feast of Pentecost. You're asked to pray for those who died recently. I remember John O'Shaughnessy, a very sweet classmate of my own, and close to the anniversary that this Mass, we've the once mine for Charlie Lapthorn, Father Paddy Cooney, John Bradley, and his brother Ray, 
Sidney and Jack Short. Also for Nora Kennedy, Kathleen Phelan, Nicola Doherty, Ralph Feasy, Eugene Lyons. Also, remember Tess Brown, Tom Brown, Eileen Coughlin, Mary and Michael O'Farrell, Ty Toomey anniversary, and his wife Maeve, a birthday remembrance, Declan Clancy, Nora Lyons, Frankie King, Anne Kennedy Walsh, and my own aunt, Madge Whelan, whose anniversary occurs around this time. May their souls and souls of all the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Just the, this week we have the evening prayer of the church at 4.35 through the live streaming, but you're welcome to join us in the church as well. Prayer and praise will be on Thursday at 9 o'clock. And due to the current restrictions, we're unable to distribute leaflets. If you wish to receive a copy of the newsletter via email, please contact the parish office. We'll continue now with our, with our offer. that my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that as promised by your Son, the Holy Spirit may reveal to us more abundantly the hidden mystery of this sacrifice and graciously lead us into all truth. We make our prayer to Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts and let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For bringing your Paschal mystery to completion, you bestowed the Holy Spirit today and those you made your adopted children by uniting them to your only begotten Son. This same Spirit, as the Church came to birth, opened to all peoples the knowledge of God and brought together the many languages of the earth in profession of the one faith. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land and every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts, they sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim.
from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Are you staying on who stay with all his God before Holy Communion, we ask you to keep a safe distance from the person in front of you as you proceed to Holy Communion. And for a smooth transition, please follow the stewards and we work from the back seats to the front. Thanks.
Let us pray. O God, who bestow heavenly gifts upon your church, safeguard, we pray, the grace you have given. At the gift of the Holy Spirit, poured out upon her, may retain all its force, and that this spiritual food may gain her abundance of eternal redemption. We make our prayer to Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you all, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So before we be end the Mass, just to congratulate Joe on that wonderful achievement, continuing on in the great musical tradition of our parish here. I think great late Fintan O'Carroll at his first, the first performance of his own mass here is now used right throughout the English-speaking world. I'm sorry for the little uh, hiccups today, but um, we'll be able to have full performance of it very, very soon. Sorry to Joe that we had a little hiccup today with the with the sound. There was a huge amount of work put in. All of the singers had to record individually, and then it had to be compiled virtually because we couldn't have choral singing in the church. Just like to thank Kate O'Byrne, Kate O'Neill, Caroline Reed O'Brien, Eva McSweeney, Liz O'Mahony, Mary O'Sullivan, Eileen Murphy, John Maloney, David Smith, John Burke, Declan Foley, and Shane Walsh. And our violinist, our violinist was Adam Walker, with Joe, the composer, at the at the organ. What does this say? Fegloela egum werak, augspexie guin galua. So, but just to thank you on behalf of the whole parish for this uh, wonderful composition, and I said it does our parish proud, and we'll have a full. Hopefully, we might be able to very very soon have the full choral uh, presentation in the performance in the church. Just like to thank um, all who helped in, in, in any way, but especially thank our stewards today, because without our stewards, we wouldn't be able to gather um, in the mass to ensure our health and safety as we gather in our church. And thank you for your cooperation with the stewards. And we weren't able to have a collection because of um, COVID restrictions. So there's baskets at the end of the church if you'd like to make a, a, an offering. It's hard times for, for all of us. So thank you again. So I've just been announced that there was a phone drop coming into the church and it's available in the sacristy if anyone's lost their, their phone. So our Mass has ended. We go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thank you, God. Oh.